What's up, peers? And welcome to the World Crypto Network. Here, continuing our guide on how you can set up a secure GPG keyring and how you can connect it uh, to your own YubiKey right here. Uh, and this is actually the step that we are going to cover today because in the last four videos, uh, we have uh, generated on Tails the secure master key and all the sub keys, plus we've done a backup of them so th that's very nice and and uh, now on the actual everyday use we're going to use this really secure little chip uh, to store uh, and to sign uh, with the private keys that we have generated earlier okay so let's jump right here into this amazing guide uh, by dr du again uh, again thank you very much uh, for providing this awesome resource uh, and so first and foremost uh, you have to get your yubikey uh, get that at yubikey.com um, and uh, I suggest here the, the uh, version 5, and then depending uh, on what type of uh, USB you want to use, you just pick one. I personally have this 5C, both for my laptop and my phone. Uh, so that's very convenient. Okay, so first and, off, uh, first and foremost, uh, we have to make sure that uh, everything is in order. So um, you have installed the uh, YubiKey personalizing tool already. Uh, and now here with this M82 flag, you check uh, that the USB uh, will go to this port right here. Uh, and then you need to edit a smart card and you do that in GPG itself. Uh, so plug in the YubiKey and it will automatically be detected uh, and printed here when you type in, in the command line GPG card edit. And you see it's this YubiKey right here, uh, which version it is, uh, and especially important here, the, uh, the serial number and everything. Um, uh, this uh, very nice here. And first, now you need to change a pin. And there are two different pins on your YubiKey. Uh, there is the default pin, uh, which you will use every time uh, that you plug in the YubiKey anew. And then there is uh, the admin pin, uh, which is used uh, for, uh, or which is a higher order key used for, um, well, all the administration stuff. Um, so when you are here inside the uh, GPG card edit window, uh, then type in admin, uh, and now you are allowed, or now you can do admin commands. So this is somewhat like a super user uh, entry. Uh, first, we want to do a password, right? And we can change a pin or change the admin pin. And uh, of course, we first want to start here with the admin pin, as this is the kind of master pin uh, to your YubiKey, uh, and make sure that it is a secure random number uh, of eight digits. So again, use a password manager or use your, your dice or your, uh, your coins or something secure uh, to generate enough randomness. Then next, we want to change the main pin. Uh, so type in the selection one, and now type in again a very secure random pin of six digits. Um, and try to memorize this pin, okay? Uh, and of course, the admin pin, as well as uh, here, the, uh, the regular pin, back it up, okay? Back everything up twice and thrice. And especially here, the admin, um, maybe even uh, the, the uh, regular pin, uh, I would suggest to, pay, uh, to back it up both on a USB stick uh, with your master key backup, as we did earlier, uh, and on paper as well. Because uh, it would really suck if you if you uh, lose your admin password or admin pin and you have to buy a new YubiKey. Uh, but well, after all, they are rather cheap. And here, 50 bucks is completely reasonable, I would say so, for the level of security that you get. Okay, then we also want to add some additional information on the YubiKey uh, so that it is linked, again, to the same identity as our GPG key is. Uh, and we, or, or of course, you're pseudonymous. So, um, Edit here again in the GPG card, uh, smart card window, edit the name, uh, your, well, your surname and given name, and your language, could be English, uh, and then the account name or, well, your email name uh, as well. And then again, when you press enter, you will see uh, all the most recent uh, changes and that you have your name, your language, your email, and everything set as well. Uh, so that is always very nice. Okay, and now the really interesting part, uh, after you exit here the GPG card window, um, we want to transfer our sub keys. Uh, so these keys uh, down here that do have a expiry date, we want to add those to the YubiKey card. And so for this, again, uh, type in the GPG command, edit keys, and the key ID of the master key uh, that we've created. Uh, so right here, uh, the 
the certificate key, the master key, this key ID uh, should be added here on top uh, with this command. And then you will see all the keys that are generated in this key ring. And that is, of course, uh, the master key and the three sub keys. Uh, and now we will move uh, one by one all these sub keys onto the UB key. Uh, so first we want to uh, now select a uh, key number one and that is that is the sub key and you will see here a little star um, at the signing key um, and this means that it is selected and now with the next key to card command uh, then um, then you can uh, again confirm this with uh, your your selection of the signing key uh, and you also then need uh, a passphrase uh, to unlock the secret. Um, so you, now you type in your master key uh, password or uh, secret um, that we've generated earlier in order to move these subkeys. Uh, then we want to add the encryption key uh, to the UB key as well. So first we need to unselect uh, key number one, which we've selected right here. And it is still selected, although we've moved it now. So we first need to unselect key one. Uh, so it's no longer selected. And of course, choose key number two, which is the encryption key with the same key to card command. And now also here the encryption key uh, there, or confirm that you really want to use this. And then now adding the authentication key first, again, unselecting the signing key from last step and selecting here the authentication key. Uh, and also then with the command key to card and confirming with the selection number three that we want to move also the authentication key. And then press save. And we're pretty much done here. We have now put all the uh, keys uh, or the, all the sub keys that we need for everyday use on the encrypted UB key, uh, both with the admin and the regular everyday pin. Um, and now, of course, we want to make sure that uh, we verify the card, that it is actually in order. Uh, so here with the save command, we leave the GPG window. And then with the GPG list secret keys, uh, it will here in this temporary directory give you the pub ring um, the, or the public key ring. And you see this is your master key right here. And then the signing encryption and authentication key. And they are all together. Uh, all the fingerprints or key IDs are uh, correct. And all the expiry dates are correct. You have your user identity as well. Uh, and that is very nice. Uh, and now all we have to do uh, is public or make public uh, that we have uh, or that this is our new uh, master key with all these sub keys. Uh, and we do that with exporting the public key. And this now means that we first have to mount uh, the another USB stick. Uh, and this is not the backup USB stick for your master key. Okay, uh, so a fresh USB stick or SD card or some other type of uh, data transfer medium. Uh, and then the GPG command with armor is going to give a clear text uh, of whatever follows. And then we want to export the key ID here of this master key. Uh, so always write when you, when you use the key ID and you want to uh, define here the entire key ring, always use the key ID of the master key. And then define a path where you want to have it uh, or, or where you want to export uh, this. And this is, of course, the mounted public USB key, uh, which then will have a text file with your pub key. Uh, same or similar for Windows and, uh, yeah. And now that you have a text file of your entire pub key, which is the public representation, not just of your master key ID or the uh, sub keys, but also of, for example, your user ID or the expiry dates uh, or the signatures that, um, th that are in the net of trust of the GPG system. Uh, so we want to tell this to, well, everyone uh, pretty much. And uh, because this is public information, right? And it, it should be public information. Uh, so what we want to do is use some type of key server, uh, which is just a database, not a blockchain, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, just a database of all the GPG keys that are publicly available. And uh, they'll be really careful because once you've uploaded it to one key server, it's going to be distributed across all the different key servers that are there. 
And this means that once you've uploaded a file or a key ring there, it cannot be taken back, right? It can be revoked afterwards, uh, but you cannot change something that you've uploaded without uh, proving the signature. So triple check that everything is correct uh, before uh, you really uh, proceed here with uploading everything to the key server. But the command here is the GPG send key of the master key ID. Um, and uh, you could also specify a, a specific a key server though with GPG key server flag and then the link or URL to the uh, key server that you prefer, which could be here the MIT or the GNU PG uh, sites as well. Um, so you can do one of them, you can do three of them, it doesn't matter. Uh, you could upload it over Tor. Uh, for example, this here is a uh, .onion address uh, for a key server. Uh, and, you know, however, as soon as you've uploaded it to one, uh, it will gossip throughout the network of all key servers. Yes, but so far, we are almost done. All that is left uh, is a little cleanup. And uh, that would be, first and foremost, making sure that you save encryption signing and authentication key on the YubiKey, okay? Really triple check everything. Uh, triple check the YubiKey pin that it is correct. Um, triple check that you have the password for the master key and all the encryption keys for the USB backups. Um, make sure that you have a copy of the master key and all the sub keys, all the revocation certificates uh, on an encrypted volume stored offline. So again, encrypt your backups. That's really, really important. Uh, save all the passwords to these encrypted backups uh, in a separate location. Okay, don't be that guy that stores the USB, uh, uh, the USB stick right next to the encryption password. That would be stupid. That you don't need to encrypt it at all and then send a copy, a copy of this public key somewhere easily accessible for later. Again, uh, you could though uh, do uh, also downloaded it uh, here from one of these key servers. And then we need to purge everything, okay? Uh, so we need to purge the entire tails uh, and all the, uh, all the keys that are on here. So first, sudo remove uh, the GNU PG home uh, root um, and then also remove uh, also, this with the re re recursive here. Uh, plus, delete the secret keys of the master key. Okay, so delete everything, even before uh, you shut down tails. Uh, and then you can uh, purge the entire tails distribution as well. And then once you shut down your computer and you can unplug uh, the tails USB stick, uh, then you're done. Uh, all the keys should be lost as they are only kept in memory, uh, which is wiped as soon as you uh, unpower the device. And uh, all the data should be, at most, uh, be trackable on the USB stick. But Tails is pretty secure. Uh, so once you shut down Tails, uh, hopefully, you can be sure that, uh, that all your secrets uh, are no longer here on this hardware, but only on the encrypted backups and on the UB keys. Yeah, Pierce, but this is basically it. Uh, so when you have followed here this awesome, awesome guide by Dr. Du, you have generated a secure master key uh, and derived the secure uh, sub keys and put these on the YubiKey plus on a backup encrypted USB stick uh, for all your master and sub keys. And so in the next couple of videos, I'll show you exactly what you can do with this really, really cool setup and, and what is possible. Uh, so it's, it's really nice uh, to, uh, to be able to have this secure GPG setup and to truly control your keys as it should be. Again, Bitcoin has the mantra, your key is your Bitcoin. And it's true. It's very true with the financial scarce asset that one Bitcoin is. But the same is true for your informational encryption keys, right? Uh, if Facebook has your encryption key, it's not encrypted, right? They have easy access to all your data, to all your information, and you cannot stop them from accessing them. Well, the only way that you can stop people from accessing your information is to not tell them to keep a secret. And the best way to keep a secret is to use the most cutting edge mathematics and cryptography on a secure hardware uh, so that you can make sure uh, that all your, uh, all your information is kept only by you and by nobody else. Because as, as soon as information is shared with others, it cannot be taken back. And it's quite a responsibility to have this. Uh, so Piers, thank you very much for sticking here through uh, this tutorial. And in the next couple of videos, I'll really show you how to apply this awesome tool of informational self-defense. So, Piers, thank you very much, and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.